So you got a shorter side and a longer one. Yeah, you're tying off at the handle here. So this knot that I'm doing is um, deemed to be 80, oh, sorry, 70% the strength of the wire, which isn't too bad. It doesn't slip, and you can use it on short strings, and it comes up pretty neat. That's how fast it is when you can do it well. Well, it's quicker than putting in a crump or anything, you know? Yeah. And, um... My wire strainers are rusty because nobody seems to be able to build good wire strainers these days that don't slip. So, yeah, show it again. Uh, slower. Slower? Yeah. So I think, oh. Okay. What you Yeah, around the first and then a loop and around the second. Him. Each of these wires is uh, tension to around 150 kgs, <laughs> and I'm pretty confident that this particular fence will stay that tight for the next 30 years because um, we've used 2.7 meter strainers all driven all the foots are driven yep and um, so here we're just at a corner it's going from this is about halfway down the line yeah halfway about um, from a there somewhere Industry standard yep. is for these these lines to actually be tied off on the strainer so that there's no um, knots in the line except for joining knots of wire where your coil runs out. Mm -mm. But um, that's good and and I do tie off a lot of fences in that manner. But uh, this works really well on a long strain. You need to get even tension from both ends. And like I say, the knot is um, pretty strong, and it doesn't slip. See this? No sharp edges on it or nothing like that. Yep. And um, it'll be fine. It'll stay here for years. Then you gotta put some buttons on everywhere. Three, three for every panel. Yeah. So this is a nine wire fence, and it's a pretty standard fence for New Zealand conditions. I really like it because uh, by the time you put three battens on this fence, there ain't nothing going to put its head through it and hassle it, and it's tight, tight like a guitar, you know. And um, they ain't going to get through this ever. And then that means that I can finish this job and. Walk away and she'll be as good as you like, you know. Yep. Those were the five first and the last four in here. Yep. Yep. I set the strainers so that um, all the knots fall in a row. As good as you can get, but the reason for that is when we come to batten this fence, there's going to be a batten here and another one here, so all of those knots are going to fall um, down in the middle. And it's not hard to change the um, strainer to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. but you gotta think in advance where you put your knots 
yeah, of because course. of the buttons. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just trimming off here what I need to uh, work with. The rest is just surplus. So this is about how much wire we've pulled out of the strain, the strain of fence. Yeah. So if you have a look along here, we've built around 200 meters here. Between the yeah. two Which trainers, is, uh, both ends. Nothing like, this is the, the last of about 1.2 kilometers that we've built in this particular job. Mm -mm. So it's a relatively short strain. And um, the rest of them, are around between three and four hundred meters which some people would consider quite long for one strain but I'm a real fan of um, having a long strain because it takes advantage of the elasticity of this wire it's just like a piece of elastic really I mean we're dealing with high tensile wire yep two and a half mil and uh, a little short piece like this feels very hard but over a great distance it becomes that very elastic and um, you've got to take advantage of that so that if you do have something move in your fence line for example if a foot comes up mm -mm. Um, that was not going to lose much tension but of course you try to set it up so you can't do that we've had a trials on this job there's been a lot of um, angle posts to put in which is like this one here and um, three of them we had to blast. And those three took a day's work each by the time we blew a hole into solid papa and then blew out a big crater and then got down 1.2 meters deep, stick the post in foot and then you got to find all the rocks, get them back in the hole and by that time you may as well pack the gear up and call it a day. Yeah, all, all those corners and, uh, and strainers there, uh, deeper in the ground than uh, over the ground, longer uh, under. This one here is the same length in the ground as it is out. Yeah. But all the ones at the end of the line are, um, uh, how far are they in the ground? Two, uh, 1500. Is that right? 1300. <laughs> Shouldn't move with this, huh? Eh? Some of this pussy ground around here is letting us down a bit. We've got to make sure that we put foots on them. And mm -mm. We're lucky that we're doing this job in, in the winter time. Well, you know, wet season anyway. So that it makes us think really hard about putting foots on that aren't going to move. Yeah. Because you can get fooled in the summertime by coming around and thinking, oh, it's nice and dry here. We can um, just put a little foot on and away we go come winter time and this ground gets really wet and you've got a tight fence it'll move which is a bit unfortunate but yeah we just saw before we had to put a huge foot and replace that's right yeah and um that's where you get trapped trapped for young players <laughs> i've had many years of doing this and i've i can I can proudly say, I suppose proudly say, that everything I've learnt, I've learnt the hard way. Because when something fails, and believe me, I've had a few things fail, you go and have a look at that and ask the question why, and you do what, you know, you learn from it. Mm -mm. Next time you think, right, I ain't going to let that happen. So, you know, <laughs> I'm still trying to build the perfect fence. Have you done it yet? I'm working on it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm too fussy for that. I, I, I spend too much time picking holes in my own work.
and uh, wire strainers can be a dog to deal with and I have found for years that if you just put them on a little safety pin like that mm -hmm. you've got them all and then you can drop them on the ground or do whatever and carry them over your shoulder and you can you've got them so you can drop them on the ground here and you pick them all up by grabbing that and not losing them <laughs> Because I wanted this one up the front anyway. Easy to deal with. Yeah, whole bunch. Whole bunch. That can be pretty to, heavy to carry I used up to here. have 20 of these, but <laughs> um, yeah, oh, 10, and 10 together as a load. I used to have 20, but. Um, Useless buggers that I've had working for me over the years have lost them. <laughs> Is it expensive, a uh, strainer like this? Oh, I think they're over $100, 130 bucks or something each. Now. Yeah. And what annoys me is, you know, there's two main companies who make wire in this country, and they still haven't got them perfect. Well. They're working on it. <laughs> so these are all my scraps that I've just made. Yeah, you take back all the shit. Yeah. Still got either end to clean up, but hey. Yeah. That's all good. Part of the job. Yeah. Well, yeah, good. So just buttoning for this one and it's done. Well, you know, this fence is stock proof now. <laughs> but um, battens will just trip it off nicely, you know. <laughs>